morning, everybody. Um, my name is Timothy Trespass, and I am still a targeted individual. Um, I just had a knock on the door, woke me up. Let's see, I don't sleep I'm without medication, and so I have to take enough medication to sleep. It's a nightmare. And um, so, anyway, I wake up and outside, I'm having this panic attack, I'm like, you know, I can't breathe, I can't see, somebody's <laughs> knocking at my door, oh my god, who is it, um, so I go outside, and there's this poor, broken, um, man, you know, all hunched over, he's got a vest on, and, and uh, you know, he looks like he's... <laughs> shouldn't be working, let alone walking around. Yeah, I work for Joseph Fabal. I said, first I said, excuse me, I'm really sick, you have to excuse me for a minute. I sat down, I caught my breath, and I said, all right, I'm sorry, who are you? And he said, I work for Joseph Fabal. And I uh, just wanted to know if you found an apartment yet. I said, hunched over in the chair. Um, no, I'm sorry, we haven't found one, we're still looking. He said, oh, okay, that's all I came to find out. I said, yeah, they, they've got us in court over this. He said, oh, I'm sorry. Whoever it is, it is. And I said, all right, thank you very much. God bless you. And he shuffled off down the stairs. Like the hunchback. He really was like the hunchback. He had this little vest on. He was hunched over and hunched along. And the poor guy. And then it dawned on me, like after he left, it took me about 50 seconds to process it. Wait a minute, this guy is the first person I've ever spoken to from the landlord. And had I been a little more on the ball, I could have asked him to relay a message to the landlord, like, uh, you know, why won't you give us a lease? <laughs> We'd like to have a lease. We've never actually even ever been able to communicate with this man. And... Uh, from what I can tell in the uh, Department of Housing and Preservation and whatever records, uh, somebody's playing fast and loose with the uh, rent stabilization, rent control reporting and, uh, you know, getting those people out by not reporting it and not giving them anything in court to, to fight against because they don't understand what it is. And uh, we're not sure if this one was that, but uh, you know, it's hard to tell. We got two printouts of the same apartment with different names, different numbers. You know, the reporting was really done sloppily, and so I don't know. You know, I still don't see. I don't have anything that can legally compel him to give us a lease. We could try a latches defense that he waited too long to tell us to, you know. But that's really stretching it, man. And that still doesn't answer to the. Uh, to the charges of the, whatever the statutes that he's quoting, <laughs> we give you know our termination of license and blah blah blah. Anyway, I, you know, I don't think there's any way really to win this case uh, and remain in the apartment. But uh, you know, we were treated horribly by these gangster people, and Petra's not sure if she wants to actually file any legal anything. Just sort of walk, you know, but she wants, doesn't want to leave. <laughs> doesn't want to go. And doesn't want to look for a place. Doesn't want to find one. Doesn't want to. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it just take takes longer for her to, to adapt to the. Uh, you know, it takes a couple of hours to adapt to the change in environment. Well, it takes a few months to. Do. We've been we've been struggling over this. Fighting over this, being tormented over this now for for quite some time, and you know she really did make it beautiful, and it has been ten moves, and she has paid for everyone, and they've sucked the life out of us. And my parents are, you know, well off, uh, secure in their agedness, and uh, you know. So, uh, 
I've been hit so many times that I'm just like still reeling from the punches. Going, all right, can I do anything now? Will they let me do anything now? Am I gonna, have you, you know? I mean, I did try before. I did make money. I did have businesses. I did, you know, pay rent. I did uh, have a life. I was responsible. I, I've been put through a lot, man. And I know the rest of you have too. Uh, and if you haven't yet, I'm sure you will be. And I pray that you won't. I don't know. The world is a very strange place. It's a very strange way to be. That there could be other ways. <laughs> anyway, uh, Oh, I wanted to show you the morning coffee ritual. The morning coffee ritual is we still have gas. Thank God that, that Con Edison is not crazy about turning off the gas. They don't care. It's too much trouble and too dangerous. Just leave it. Uh, and they didn't shut it off, although I'm sure they would have loved to, the, the, the landlord. So we do have some gas. And I boil some water. And we have a coffee maker here which I could actually use on the generator, but it makes so much noise. Listen, folks, if you ever got to buy a generator, take my advice and get the Honda Quiet Series generator. Uh, if you only need 2,000 watts, the little E2000 or whatever it is, is perfect. But it's fucking expensive. It's like 1,600 bucks new, or $800 used or something. We didn't have enough, and I wish we did, because we could have run it all night and all day, and nobody would have been the wiser, you know. Now I can run it a few hours a day, you know, like a contractor or whatever. Uh, they haven't called the fire department or the police yet. I turned it off last night at 11.15 or whatever, so. I'll run it all day today. Uh, get on the internet, look around. And, uh, oh, did I show you the pouring of the water into the coffee maker? Yeah, I pour the water in the coffee maker, and it makes coffee. Anyway, I got my uh, rich and pure half and half. Have you ever noticed that everywhere you look, there's little signs and symbols and slogans that sort of like say, Screw you, buddy. You're a loser. <laughs> you know, or just do it. Uh, go for it, you know, like, just, uh, all, you read all these, I saw one yesterday on an antifreeze or an oil, peak oil, you know, it's like a constant reminder, uh, be afraid, be very afraid, and it's almost subliminal, because you don't notice it's this fog of consumer products and, and commercials, and, but it's all telling you the same thing, be afraid, you're going to lose what you have, you're going to die, you know, be afraid. Think from your hindbrain only. 